Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to the house of the Lord. As we worship Him today, as we lift up our voice, let us truly worship Him in, worship Him in spirit and in truth. And as we come together on this beautiful Sunday, uh, let us ask the Lord, ask the Spirit to lead us and guide us and um, to truly speak to us through, through the speaker today. As we worship Him and as we listen to God's Word, let us truly be attentive. Let us ask the heart to be attentive to His Word. So at this time, before we start our worship service, let's prepare our hearts as we start. Lord, you took the time to, to save that one lost lamb, and you are a good father, Lord. You took the time to save that one, one soul, that lost soul, uh, and, and you are our good shepherd, our good father, and you are the only, only person worthy of our praise. So we give you all the glory and honor and praise this afternoon today. And Father, please accept our worship and our praise today as we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's all rise from our seats. Let's worship him today. For the praises. For the praises of man. I will never ever stand For the kingdoms of this world I'll never give my heart away Or shout my praise My allegiance and devotion My heart's desire and all emotion I'm Gonna serve a man who died upon that tree Sing this one more time for the praises of man. For the praises of man, I will never ever stand. For the kingdoms of this world, I'll never give my heart away or shout my praise, my allegiance and devotion, my heart's desire and all emotion gonna serve a man who died upon that tree only a god only a god like you could be worthy of my praise and all my open faith to only a king of all kings do i bow my knee and sing give my everything only a god only a god like you could be worthy of my praise and all my open faith to only a king of all kings do i bow my knee and sing give my to only my maker to only my maker my father my savior redeemer restorer rebuilder rewarder to only a god like you do i give my praise For the praises of man. For the praises of man, I will never ever stand. For the kingdoms of this world, I'll never give my heart away or shout my praise. My allegiance. 
transcend devotion, my heart's desire and all emotion. Gonna serve a man who died upon that tree. Only a God, only a God like you could be worthy of my praise and all my hope and faith. To only a king of all kings Do I bow my knee and sing Give my everything Only a God like you Could be worthy of my praise And all my hope and faith To only a king of all kings Do I bow my knee and sing Give to only my maker to only my maker, my father, my savior, redeemer, restorer, rebuilder, rewarder. To only a God like you, do I give my praise. Sing only a God. Only a God like you, only a God like you, only a God like you. Only a God like you, only a God like you, only a God like you, only a God. Only a God like you, only a God like you, only a God like you. One last time, only a God. Only a God like you, only a God like you, only a God like you. To only my maker. To only my maker, my father, my savior, redeemer, restorer, rebuilder, rewarder. To only a God like you, do I give my praise. Amen. Amen. We give you all the praise and all the honor, Lord. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like but i've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that i'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, I've seen many searching for answers far and wide. But I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we can say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You are perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Love so undeniable, I can hardly speak. Peace so unexplainable, I can hardly think as you call me, deeper still as you call me, deeper still as you call me, deeper still into love, 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 you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm 
loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's you're a good, good father. It's you're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, you are perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us, to us. And all that I am, all that I have, I lay them down before you. All my acclaim, the joy and the pain, I'm making them yours. All that I am, all that I am, all that I have, I lay them down before you. joy and the pain I'm making them yours let's sing this all together all the Lord I have Lord I offer my life to you everything I've been through use it for your glory Lord I offer my days to you Lifting my praise to you as a pleasing sacrifice. Lord, I offer you my life. Sing all that I am. And all that I am, all that I have. these lives we are living and that's what we give to you Lord Lord I offer my life to you everything I've been through use it for your glory Lord I offer praise to you 
Lord, I offer you my life. Lord, I offer you my Lord. I offer my life to you. Everything I've been through, use it for your glory. Lord, I offer my days to you, lifting my praise to you. As a pleasing sacrifice, Lord, I offer you my life. Let's look at the scripture reading for today. It comes to us from the book of Galatians in the New Testament. So, Galatians chapter 6, verses 11 to 16. Galatians 6, 11 to 16. And I'll read it for us. Let us, us, uh, you can look at your bulletin or follow along at the screen above. See what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hand. Those who want to impress people by means of the flesh are trying to compel you to be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. Not even those who are circumcised keep the law. Yet they want you to be circumcised that they may boast about your circumcision in the flesh. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Neither circumcision or uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, to the Israel of God. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray before I uh, preach the word. Father God, we come before you at this time to listen to your word. Please fill this place with the Holy Spirit. Fill each and every one of us to give us the ears to hear. And also fill me and and please control my lips as we look at your word through Galatians. Be with us at this time as we focus solely on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So it's getting pretty warm out there, which, you know, signifies that summer is in full effect. And we already find ourselves in the first Sunday of July. So in other words, half the year has already passed. I don't know about you, but time really flew. Um... I remember the first time I stood up here, I believe around uh, the end of March, and I was talking about how, you know, we were starting, you know, fresh, and I talked a little bit about New Year's resolutions, and for those of you that remember, so far I have failed very miserably in keeping those resolutions. But, you know, because it's the first Sunday of the second half of the year, you know, it's a great time for us to reflect and think about the first half of the year and rededicate ourselves for this second half. So today we look at the book of Galatians and to be specific, today's passage, it comes from the very last section of Galatians. It's basically Paul's concluding remarks to the church in Galatia and we wanna begin with verse 11. See, in fact, This verse 11, it serves as a very nice, natural introduction before we examine verses, the the other verses, verses 12 to 16, and to see what they have to teach us today. So let's read verse 11 together one more time. See what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hand. See, this verse, it simply serves as a signal that the letter is coming to an end. Some of you may have already heard this before from maybe previous sermons or from maybe Bible studies, but it was very common for people back in this time to use a scribe or a secretary to basically write down everything that was said, especially when people were writing letters. So in this situation, Paul used a scribe to write his letter to the Galatians. And 
Basically, from the start, you know, chapter 1, verse 1, the scribe wrote everything until we get to this point. So chapter 6, you know, verse 11, suddenly Paul takes over. He starts writing with his own hands. Now, Paul is announcing to this church in Galatia that I am personally writing this. And what does this mean? This wasn't un unusual. This happened very frequently at this time. But basically, it was a way for Paul to add a personal touch. You know, it was also to emphasize what he wanted to say next. Basically, this was an attention grabber. You know, Paul saying, hey, you might want to pay attention now. So we can split Paul's main and final message to this church into two sections. This first section uh, is from verses 12 to 13 which we will call the flesh-centered flesh boasting. And the second section is verses 14 and 15, which we'll refer to as cross-centered boasting. So we want to look at these two types of boasting and see what Paul has to say to us today. So the first section here, flesh-centered boasting. And for us to look at this again, let me reread verses 12 and 13 for us. Those who want to impress people by means of the flesh are trying to compel you to be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. Not even those who are circumcised keep the law, yet they want you to be circumcised that they may boast about your circumcision in the flesh. So this first type of boasting is nothing new. Now, Paul is talking about false teachers and false teaching, you know, that happened here specifically in the church of Galatia. This false teaching, it revolved around the law of Moses and specifically, you know, these laws surrounding circumcision. And on one hand, we should actually applaud these Jews, these Israelites, because of their steadfast loyalty to tradition and holding on to old customs. However, you know, their story is also a warning because it shows us a major problem that comes with holding on to old customs, especially when we hold on to things for too long. We end up missing what truly matters. See, many Jews at this time, they failed to see the new covenant with the coming of Jesus Christ. They were unable to see and understand the grace of God because they were too focused on their old ways. This is why we see many teachers, false teachers here, that try to twist Christianity to fit into Judaism. See, these false teachers, what were they trying to do? They were trying to force people to become circumcised. And of course, these people would have had to have been Gentiles. Because Jews, it was already custom for them to be circumcised as a baby. So these people that were being circumcised, especially being forced to, be circ to being circumcised, these were all new believers who were Gentiles. Now they were boasting about the number of Gentiles that they had converted, they had, they had gotten to become circumcised. And from these two verses that we just read, we can learn a few things about these false leaders who brag about flesh-related topics. The first thing that we see about these false teachers and similar people is that they were very interested in their own image, in their reputation. Let's think about this. Why does anyone ever boast? You know, the most fundamental reason is to make yourself look good. You know, why do you boast? You want to make yourself look better. So people brag to make themselves look better and to have, you know, a better standing, a better reputation. And as we all know, it's not easy to evangelize and to convert people to Christianity. I don't know if you've ever tried, but, you know, it's very difficult. And I have mad respect for those people that are just out there on the streets that are, you know, shouting, you know, believe in Christ. That's not how I would go about it, but, you know, it's not easy these people wanted to brag and show off the number of Gentiles, the number of, you know, Christians that they've made into believers. 
And the most, and the best, and the most visible way to do that, especially at this time, was to get them to become circumcised, because it was a symbolic ritual. And not only that, but it left them very vulnerable. So these people who were boasting, they were like trophy hunters. You know, they were just trying to find people as trophies, so that they could show off to everyone else. Hey, you see that person? I converted him. That person, I converted him. You know, it was just kind of a competition in a sense. And from this, we can see that they didn't have a true understanding of Christianity. You know, they didn't have a real relationship with Jesus. It was very superficial, you know, in understanding and also in action. And in fact, we also learn from these verses that some of these people may have been doing this to gain favor from fellow Jews, which teaches us that some people, especially some of these false leaders, they had selfish motives. See, it is no secret that the relationship, especially between early Christians and Jews, was not the greatest. So it would come as no surprise that there were some false teachers that forced Gentiles to get circumcision in order to get Jews to like them. Because for Jews, you know, this was important. For any non-Jewish person to be a part of the Jewish, basically, custom, and their family, all the traditions, they had to be circumcised. So this act could have brought favor to some of these false teachers. But Jesus made it pretty clear that following him, it would mean a life of persecution. Because Christian thinking, this goes against worldly thinking. You know, perhaps these false teachers at this time, they wanted the best of both worlds. You know, they wanted to make everyone happy, even if that meant making compromises. Which is why we also learn that these false teachers were people that were also hypocrites. See, their words and their actions, they did not match. They did not align. These teachers, they were, for, they were only focused on saying the right things and doing the right things when people were watching. They didn't have the desire for inward change because of their love for God. It was not true. You know, these false teachers, they only cared about outward conformity and boasting to others to do the same. They weren't interested in actually guiding these Galatian Christians to walk in, a, in humble obedience to God. You know, these teachers, they were all about adhering to laws, following laws, rather than one's religious faith, faith and focusing on that. They wanted to make others uh, feel weak by showing just how great they were by boasting about their numbers. And Paul quickly teaches, teaches us that that is the wrong kind of boasting. Because very quickly in the two verses that follow, in verses 14 and 15, we learn about this other type of boasting that contrasts what we just looked at. So verses 14 and 15, if we read this together, May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the word has been crucified to me and I to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. See, Paul, he very quickly rejects these false leaders. In fact, he makes it very clear that boasting, generally speaking, isn't something that we want to do. Look at how he starts, the, you know, verse 14. He starts with, may I never boast. So generally speaking, you know, that is not something that we want to do. But we learn that there is one situation that Paul teaches us in which it is okay. And we know this because of the word except, right? Afterwards, the phrase that comes after except, we see that in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. So in other words, our boasting, it should be cross-centered. But what does that mean? What does that mean by being cross-centered? See, the cross of Jesus Christ, you know, the cru crucifixion, this focuses on 
the inside, our insides, you know, it's the complete opposite of what we looked at when it focused on the outside. See, it focuses on the one instead of others. See, the crucifixion is a reminder for all of us about our sins. It reminds us that we should never be, we should have been the ones who died on the cross rather than Jesus. So Paul was reminding people that our old self, it had to die. See, the life of Saul was dead. And the only thing to brag about in his new life was this life having met Jesus Christ and having become Paul. And Paul, he reminds us of something very similar when he talks to the Corinthian church. And if you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, I think many of us will be familiar with this verse. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. See, cross-centered boasting is about only one thing. That is being a new creation. See, Paul understood that this was the most important thing. You know, being a new creation. And that was the only thing that we should boast about. See, unlike this first type of boasting, this second type of boasting, it doesn't look to other people. It doesn't look at what other people think and how they see us. Because being a new creation has nothing to do with others. It's solely about us and our relationship with Jesus Christ. See, calling Jesus Lord, serving him as our master, this means our focus should be solely on Jesus Christ. In other words, our personal relationship with Christ, that is what's most important. Our lives, everything about it should be about making him, the one, happy. It is not about making others happy, not about making compromises. And as such, cross-centered boasting we can see that it also focused on the eternal. See, the focus isn't about our reputation, our standing right now, especially here on this earth. No, it is about our reputation and standing in heaven and what is waiting for us there. And where does it all begin? It begins with our personal relationship with Jesus as our Savior. And then... From this faith, from this belief that we have, our actions must follow. It must align and match with our Christian faith and beliefs. So that brings us to the big question. You know, how does all of this apply to our lives today? See, obviously circumcision, this isn't an issue that we worry about or talk about nowadays. You know, it isn't something some ritual that we must go through. So we must think about this in a symbolic manner. And one way to do that is to think about it in terms of the concept of legalism. Basically, acts, of, acts that we follow in terms of rules, rather than focusing on what truly matters, which is the faith. See, even today, we have many legalistic people. You know, we have people that always focus on rules and laws and following them, you know, every single one. And some people, they fall into this false thinking that following these rules and laws are what, are what is most important. Basically, it is living like our Israelite friends from old. And even now, though, even though we know that Jesus Christ and a relationship with him is most important, we still fall into this false thinking. We fall into this thinking that we have to act certain ways and do certain things. And for some of us, and it may be you know, familiar because we act this way, or maybe you know someone like this. But some of us, you know, we come to church because we want to be seen. You know, we want people to see that we come to church. And some of us, some among us, you know, we like to make big offerings for other people to see. You know, we have to make an announcement when we do something nice. You know, and some of us, we like to pray really loud so that other people can hear and see that you know, we have a great relationship with Jesus. But when we do this, what are we actually doing? 
We are boasting just like these false teachers because we are trying to improve our reputation and our standing, you know, here in the church. And when we do this, you know, we are doing this with selfish motives. And the most unfortunate thing about this is that these types of people, they tend to be the hypocrites, right? They tend to be the ones that act and say the right things. But when it comes down to it, they're the ones that usually aren't keeping these rules when people aren't watching. Or, when, or these are the people that have actually very weak and superficial uh, faith. But, you know, we, we should not be boasting and bragging about such things. You know, if anything, as we saw, see here, we must be boasting about our love for Jesus and especially about how Jesus has changed our lives. Because when we have this cross-centered boasting, there is unity. What do I mean by this? See, when we come together, we come together because of our love for Jesus, right? The church isn't a building, right? You've all heard this. It is a group of believers. But why do we come together? It is because of our love for Jesus Christ, because of our personal relationship with him. So when we come together because of our individual love for Jesus Christ, we form this church and we can do some amazing things as a church. See, yes, your relationship with Jesus is personal. Only you and Jesus know about your true relationship. You know, we can't judge whether you have a strong relationship or a weak relationship. But that does not mean that you must focus only on yourself. As I've mentioned, the church, it is made up of individuals. And it is made up of indiv individuals who have something in common. You know, and this brings me to our very short conclusion, which is well summarized by verse 16. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, to the Israel of God. See, remember, I just said that the church is made up of individual members, right? Who have something in common. This commonality, you know, is our love for Christ. And this has led all of us to become a new creation. So when we all come together, all as new creations, we form a united church. And what, do, well, what does a united church have? It has the peace and mercy that Paul talks about here in verse 16. See, as I mentioned at, in the beginning of my sermon, you know, the first half of 2022 it has already passed. There's nothing we can do about it. You know, the past is history. And I'm sure if, as we reflect upon, you know, our first six months, there have been some successes, especially in our walk of faith. But I'm also sure that there's been many failures as well. So today, as the first Sunday of the second half of 2022, you know, it is a great day to reflect, you know, take a time Take some time to just reflect upon our life, especially, you know, your Christian walk of faith. Have we been boasting in the flesh or have we been boasting in the cross? And we must live by following this rule that Paul tells us of this newness in the Holy Spirit. And when we do this, God will grant us peace and mercy. So it is my hope, it is my prayer that all of us, that we can follow this rule, you know, and boast in the cross so that we can do our best to align and match our words and actions for the rest of this new year. Hopefully, you know, we can do better than what we've done these past six months. So as we reflect upon this, please join me in prayer as we wrap up and think about these past six months. Well, let's just close our eyes and just take a short minute here to reflect. You know, especially if you made some resolutions at the beginning of the year, especially goals in terms of your Christian walk of faith. Where have you succeeded? Where have we failed? Have, 
we've been able to keep our relationship with Jesus Christ? And have we been boasting? And if so, have we been boasting the right way in the cross? Heavenly Father, we come to you at this time to think about Paul's message to the Galatians and how it, how it applies to even us today. Especially in this last section, in the farewell, you give us a very strong warning to not boast in the flesh, but to boast in the cross. Help us to follow the rule that you have taught us to focus on being a new creation, to focus on our relationship with Jesus Christ. Help us to remember this, especially as we go about the second half of this year. We thank you for everything. Give us the strength to live our lives for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.